Good prayer, good prayer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the title of the message tonight is Kingdom Leadership. As I was praying about the message, uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, his leaders see what he is doing before others see it. And so I believe that we all have potential to be leaders, but that potential has to be developed and cultivated and nurtured. And so we're going to be talking about leadership. And it wasn't because this is something that uh, I had in my thinking, but it's what God spoke mm. to me, that that's what we're uh, to cover today is leadership, his leadership, because his leadership is different than uh, leadership in the in the natural, uh, and, and we need to understand that. And, and so I believe this is an important message uh, for all of us, and many people uh, think, well, they're, they're not really in a leadership role, but uh, if you're a parent, uh, you certainly have some uh, mm -hmm. leadership uh, uh responsibility or uh, if you're in a, a family you have responsibility in those uh uh even in uh or the workplace uh, mm -hmm. and i know many of you uh are uh leaders in, in your own uh, workplace in your own environment so we're going to be talking about leadership god is looking for leaders uh, for those people mm. who can see what he's doing, see as he sees things. And so I think this is very important. You know, Jesus is, of course, the greatest example of a leader uh, that we could possibly imagine as far as a kingdom leader. Um, and we know from John 5, verse 19, that he saw what God was doing. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read mm. this verse because this is the core verse and the kickoff uh, for our leaders uh, about what God told us to cover tonight. John 5, 19 from the New American Standard. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. But whatever the father does, these things the son also does in the same way. Mm, oh, do you see that? He mm -hmm. saw the father. He saw the father doing things. Yeah. And the only thing he did was what he saw the father do. But the father's invisible. So he's looking in heaven. He's looking at the unseen. And so this message tonight, mm -hmm. we're going to be training our thoughts and our mind and our letting our spirit come up and rise up and so that we can see the unseen. You know, uh, Thomas, uh, one of the disciples of Jesus, uh, came to him after he was resurrected, after the resurrected, and he said uh, to, to, his, uh, to the other disciples, I'm only going to believe if I, I see, see. <laughs> if I see it, if I stick my fingers in the the nail prints in his hands and put my fist in his side. I've got to see things. And, and we would have think, we would think that uh, Jesus would, would say to him, oh, you're blessed because you believe. But no, he didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He said, blessed are those who believe when they have not seen. Oh, do you see this? We have mm -hmm. to train our thinking to seeing things that are unseen. Ooh, and the Bible talks, wow. talks a mm. lot about that. Oh, say that one more time. We have to train our thinking to begin to look for the unseen, look into the unseen realm, because God said his leaders see what he, he is, is doing. doing. So mm. they're seeing into the unseen realm and before mm. others people mm. see it. Mm. That's one thing to say, okay, God has come through and he's He's made all these changes or he's healed all these people. Obviously, he's doing something. But we need to see it in the unseen realm before it's manifested in this natural realm. So seeing things in the spiritual realm, that's what we're talking about tonight. And we need to train our eyes uh, and, and our thoughts, our minds, 
to think about mm -hmm. seeing things that are unseen, that cannot be seen with the natural eye. Uh, this, is, this is important for all of us mm -hmm. because that's what faith is. And, and Thomas, uh, Jesus told Thomas, you, you know, if you want to be blessed, you've got to believe before you see. So in other words, you're believing because of what's going on in the unseen realm. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. But, but we have uh, some several scriptures about seeing in the unseen realm. And the first one is a prayer. I want to look at Ephesians 1.18. This is a prayer. This is a prayer that we mm -hmm. we've talked about before. It's uh, Paul praying for the Ephesians, but it's but it's really the heart of God praying for all of us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. Okay, Ephesians 1.18, also out of the New American Standard. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Okay, so we have two sets of eyes. We have eyes up here. Oh, on wow. Our, on our forehead. Uh huh. Uh, that's that's our natural eyes, our physical eyes, but we also have spiritualized the eyes of our heart. Mm -hmm. We have to train, train our thinking and our thoughts and our mind so that we begin to see with the eyes of our heart, spiritualized. Oh, that's now, good. That's now, pretty. There, there are three things that you see with your spiritual mm -hmm. eyes. And one is your calling. What is your calling? Mm -hmm. In other words, what's your purpose? What? Why are you on the earth? That's the first thing, to know the hope of your calling. And second thing, you see with your spiritual eyes, the eyes of your heart, you see your inheritance. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, this is real important. This is real important oh, for wow. us right there. Wow, wow, wow. And the third, and this is in the next uh verse verse 19 which we didn't read was also to see the power of God operating in you so three things mm. that you see with your spiritual eye uh right here in this prayer and this is what he prayed that it, only when we see through spiritual eyes looking at things that are unseen we see things in heaven we see what God mm. is doing we see what he wants to do we see as he sees Okay, then we see these three things, our calling, our inheritance, yes. and the power of God that works within us. Hallelujah. We need to see all of those, and you can't see any of That's them with good. your physical eyes. That's good. That's you good. have to see it with your spiritual eyes, the eyes of your heart. So what we're going to be doing today is talking about learning how to see with our un, uh, to see the unseen. And that's important. And mm -hmm. we need to know that there are all of these verses. And that's the reason I wanted to go over some of these verses that we see the unseen. You know, it said Moses endured as seeing. So he went through, you think about it. He went down there uh, to, to uh, Egypt and delivered uh, the descendants of Israel out of uh, Egypt, they were slaves there. He, he brought them up, uh, went through the Red Sea, parted the Red Sea, went out 40 years. He was out there in the wilderness and it said he endured. So those 40 years, how, how could he endure those 40 years? The Hebrews 11 said he endured, endured because he saw mm -hmm. him who was invisible. invisible. He saw the unseen. He could, you know, that was, a, that would have been a long, hard uh, journey, 40 years in the wilderness. And, and it, mm -hmm. uh, he should have, it should have only taken them 11 days to uh, make the journey. But uh, because of their rebellion, uh, the people's rebellion and doubt and unbelief, uh, the, mm -hmm. God had to take them on a roundabout uh, journey for 40 years. But he still endured those 40 years. He still trusted in the Lord, followed the Lord. He was a leader because he could see the invisible. He saw him who was mm. invisible. He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw him, uh, the invisible one. Uh, when he had not even come to earth, 
uh, as a baby yet, but he was seeing him with his spiritual eyes, the eyes of his heart. So this is really important. We need to know this concept because this is a type of leader that God is looking for. People that don't look uh, at mm -hmm. the, just, just the scene, but they're seeing heaven. They're seeing into heaven. Mm -hmm. What they're thinking like heaven. They're walking like heaven. They're they're uh, bringing heaven to earth and letting heaven in. Hallelujah. These are the leaders of yes. God's Amen. kingdom. Amen. These are the leaders in God's kingdom, and that's who. Uh, we all have the potential to, to be that. And, and the first thing we have to do is to learn to see uh, the unseen. And I have a couple of other verses in 2 Corinthians. I won't share to read the first ones in 2 Corinthians 4. It says, for our momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison while we look not at the things which we are which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary oh i love that but the things which are not seen are eternal oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Are, are you getting a, a sense of of this message that we need to learn how to see the unseen and it's going to be by faith, of course. Mm -hmm. But what it says here, regardless of what you're going through, how difficult it is, and, I, and, and I'm sure we go through difficult things all, all the time. All of us go through difficult times. But he, he uh, Paul said, these are just momentary light afflictions. So all of the terrible things that happen to us on the earth, Paul says, they're just momentary light afflictions. And of course, that's the breath of, of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, all scripture is breathed by the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit said, whatever you are encountering in this life on this earth, it's mm -hmm. just momentary light affliction. It's just a little thing in comparison to the eternal weight of glory that's in store for you. While while you look not at the things which are seen. Now, this is important. We've got to learn how to look at the things that are not, not seen. seen. But if we keep looking at the things that are seen, we'll think, oh, these terrible things that are happening to us, they're, they're just terrible and we can't uh, withstand them and we can't lift, uh, lift them up and we can't get out from under them. Uh, and we just get so caught up in the troubles of life that, that we miss the eternal weight of glory that God has for us because you have to realize there are two kinds of things this verse is talking about temporary things and eternal things and see the eternal things are the things that we don't see and that's the reason we have to renew our mind and, and mm -hmm. look for the unseen things that's where faith is. Faith is going to be out there catching hold of the eternal things, causing heaven to invade earth. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I, I'm really, really excited about this message. Now, we have to learn. We have to learn how to look at unseen things. Now, uh, there's another verse also in 2 Corinthians, which I won't share you to read. This is 2 Corinthians 5. It's about seeing the way we're supposed to see. Second Corinthians 5, 7. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you get that? We're not supposed to go by what we're seeing in the natural. Our problems may look very big, very big problems. Uh, or problems in our family, problems with our children. Problems, problems in our body. Our Problems, uh, they may look very big, but when we compare them with God, God is infinite. Hallelujah. Nothing compares with him. He is infinite. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He's present everywhere. Where? I mean. and so pro our problems uh, do not compare with God. Do not compare. He can do all things, and nothing is impossible with God. And so we need to begin to renew our mind to think 
eternal things. Think about eternal mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Look at eternal things. For we walk by faith, faith and not, not by, by sight. sight. So this uh, part of the message, then we're talking mm, about learning how, how to look at unseen things. Remember, Moses endured, endured a very arduous uh, journey, 40 years, because he was looking at him who is invisible, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so, uh, you, you know, last week, uh, we talked about being changed from glory to glory. glory. And, and tonight, I, I want to pick up on that uh, that theme about being changed from glory to glory. And of course, that's, uh, uh, I believe, 2 Corinthians 3.18. We're changed. Oh, but we're, well, everybody's not being changed. It's those people who are looking at the one who's unseen. Yeah, I mean. You see that? We have the one to look, who changes us. The, yeah, we have to look into a mirror. We have to look at the word of God. We, we begin to look at him. We're changed into the image into his image or changed into his image okay so what i want to say now is we're going to look at and we're going to assess are we ready to be leaders mm -hmm. and, and we're, we're going to keep that whole uh message from last time in mind that we're being changed, changed. from glory to glory being changed okay so when we first come to the lord we're like we're called infants spiritual infants mm. but through time we're supposed to mature spiritual maturity and, and so uh we're going to have to mature spiritually in order to be leaders to be god's leaders uh, and, and begin to see into the supernatural realm into the spiritual realm see the unseen and, and so um they're really two things I want us to talk about uh, if we can assess, and this is not for me to assess your uh, readiness for leadership, but it's a, it's for you to assess your own readiness mm, for leadership, leadership, because this message is about leadership. And, and as again, I, it was because the Lord talked to me about leadership mm. uh, as I was praying about this message. He said, his leaders see what he's doing before other people see it. And then they begin to show it to other people. So are you ready mm. to be a, a leader, uh, a spiritual leader, a kingdom leader? And uh, you all have potential to be, uh, but that potential has to be nurtured. And, and so we're going to be looking at these two things, encountering God and secondly, your prayers. And that's going to show you, not, not me and not Sherry, but it's going to show you, you can think about these two things I'm going to raise, these two issues, uh, where you are on that, we're on that scale. See, it's a continuum. Are you on near the infant side of being in Christ? Uh, are you near the, uh, the mature, spiritually mature person? So some, we're all in that range. Somewhere between mm -hmm. infant and spiritual maturity. We're somewhere, everybody. Uh, and, and so we need to know ourselves. Where are we? It's easy for me to say, oh, yeah, we're being changed from glory to glory. And that's true. And we all are being changed from glory to glory. And how are we doing? How's that happening? By the Holy Spirit. We're being changed by the Holy Spirit from glory to glory. And that's that's good to say that and but well, we need to know where are we on that continuum are we closer over here to being a spiritual infant or are we closer over here to being spiritually mature and, and so these two things will help you assess where you are on that continuum are, are you over here close to being a spiritual infant or are you close to being a spiritual mature adult okay so the first one is encountering god uh, you have to encounter God uh, to move along. So as you're encountering God, that's going to make you more and more mature. You're going to be changed in mm -hmm. his presence. Uh, yes, I mean. You, you can't go into his presence and not be changed. 
when we encounter God, we are going to be changed. So I want to ask you, when was the last time you encountered God? When was the last time that God spoke to you? When, when was the last time that God took you in one situation and changed you and moved you and you have a testimony to tell how God has changed you. So I, I've just addressed mm -hmm. that same concept three different ways, but, but let's just think it, think about it for a moment for yourself. When was the last time you encountered God? And, and out of that encounter, you were changed. You have a testimony. Well, I want to just give you an experience and something that's happened to Sherry and I as an example of something that happened to Sherry and I on Monday. Uh, no, I'm sorry, on Sunday. Mm. Okay, so this past Saturday, um, I, I found out about a place where the, near here that was 40 miles from here that uh, the it was a place of peace for uh, three nations, for three nations, three Native, uh, Native American, American Native, Native American nations, a, a place of peace. Okay, so the, the Lord sent us there uh, to that place. A and I I'm just using this as an example of we need to encounter God and we need to be encountering God. And I want to use this example to show you uh, that uh, of a recent encounter that Sherry and I had that I believe was a very significant encounter, that God sent us there to that mm -hmm. place to reopen an ancient portal, uh, that it had been a place, and, and the Native Americans uh, said that it was a place where they walked with the Great Spirit, uh, with the Great Spirit. Well, uh, in their language, they call that the Great Spirit, but in, in my language, I call the great spirit God. Hallelujah. So that was a place where for centuries, uh, the Native Americans said God would walk with the people, walk mm. with the people. And that his presence was there. Okay. And this was the, the Creeks, the Choctaw, and the Cherokees, three very powerful Native American uh tribes and, and they would be warring against either but not against each other but not in this place in this place they it was a place of peace god brought peace in that place and they could not shed blood they could not even hunt animals in that place okay so it was a place of peace and so when they went into that place they encountered god they encountered god they had peace and if two native uh uh uh, people from uh, different nations came together. They will. They would be friends in there. They they couldn't shed blood, they, even though outside of that area, they might be uh, mortal enemies. But in that place, it was a special place. It was a very special place where the peace of God reigned, and they couldn't shed blood. Okay, so then the white settlers came, and in 1785, the first day they were there, uh, they shot a bear. And they slaughtered a bear and they ate a bear. And the Native Americans saw that. And they it, they desecrated this sacred place. It's a holy place. The, the white people, uh, the white settlers, when they came there, okay? So the white settlers uh, built a village there. and But because they had desecrated what the Native Americans said was a holy place, a sacred place, they started started fighting with the whites. Mm. And so the Native Americans killed whites and the whites killed Native Americans and the whites had to build a fort. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing that this is a place of peace for nations and yet the whites had come in there and, and changed everything and desecrated everything and now there's so much uh, hatred and uh, and hostility mm -hmm. between the whites and the Native Americans that the whites had to build a fort there. And so this was a portal to heaven. This is where the presence of God would come down and walk with man. And, and this is just 40 miles from Athens, Georgia. And, and so the Lord sent us there on Sunday 
to reopen that ancient portal because it had been shut up for uh, a couple of hundred years. And, and so Sherry and I went there and we prayed. See, God has told us that it takes energy and power to, uh, to open ancient portals. It's like in the Bible, they talk about uh, redigging the wells. Redigging the wells, mm -hmm. uh, let's say that Abraham, uh, he had, uh, he dug wells. And then uh, later on, the enemy came and filled those wells yeah, up Philistines. with, uh, with uh, dirt. And so the descendants of Abraham had to go back and rebuild them. And so that's re what we redig them, redig them, redig them. And so that's what we call revival. That was a, a symbol of revival. When you open uh, the ancient portals uh, where God interacts with men, uh, then that's a revival. That's an outpouring of his spirit. Uh, and of course, he, his spirit is everywhere, but it's not the the presence though it is not at the same level every place and where there's a really outpouring of his spirit that's that's where we see revival and so on sunday i'm just using this as an mm -hmm. example because i'm really excited about something that just happened uh that we need to be encountering god leaders need to be encountering god that's when we're changed we're changed from glory to glory mm -hmm. by his spirit and so on Sunday, we went there, we prayed, mm -hmm. and we opened the portal, and the Lord spoke to us. Okay, Sherry, sure, you want to say something? Well, this place is called Hurricane Shoals, and uh, in the Native American language, uh, it means tumbling waters, tumbling waters. And so we, Brother Fred and I went there, and we sat by the tumbling waters, and the Lord began to speak to us. And we encountered his presence there. And he began to tell us of things that he wanted us to do. And, and so this was definitely an encounter uh, with, with the Lord on, on Sunday. Okay. So what I'm saying, we need to train our eyes and our thinking so that we can see into the unseen realm. And and. We need to have experiences with God. We need to be encountering God because that's going to change us from glory, glory to, to glory. glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, and assessing your readiness for leadership. Mm -hmm. That's what this message is all about. We have, we have some that have just joined us. This message is on uh, leadership. So consider your encounters what what are the past encounters what's the most recent encounter that you've had with god and i gave you an example of one of the most recent encounters that sherry and i have had with god and how it has impacted us and see we've opened an ancient portal where the presence of god comes and walks with man uh in, in a great uh, way and so we're real excited about that, and we'll be carrying other people back there because we want to keep mm -hmm. that portal open uh, because it's it's a significant place. Now, a, another encounter I had was yesterday as I was praying to the Lord and, and asking him about this message today. And in, in that, I heard him say, his leaders see what I am doing before other people see it. And so that's what a, a kingdom leader is. A, a leader, a God's leader is going to be seeing into the unseen realm, into the nat uh, supernatural realm and seeing the unseen because those are the eternal things. So his leaders see the unseen. And that prepares them to lead other people because they see what God is doing. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. He didn't do anything except what he saw the father do. And that we need to be like that because we're imitators of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He only did what he saw the father do. Well, we should only be doing what we see happening in heaven. We should be bringing heaven to earth. And, and I, I'm giving you two examples of how to assess your readiness 
to be one of God's leaders. Okay, the first one was, what encounters have you had with the Lord? And, and if you haven't had a recent encounter, then you would just be operating out of memory, out of memory. But, but we need to be mm. operating out of life, mm. out of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And mm. So mm. When, when you hear God speak to you, that's the word, and that's the word coming alive uh, by the Spirit of God. And, and so those encounters, we need those encounters. And, and we're, when we have those encounters, we're going to be changed from glory, glory to, to glory. glory. Amen. The second measure I want you to measure yourself by and that is your prayers. How mm. are you praying? How are you praying? What is the focus of your prayers? Is the focus, see, if the focus of your prayers is all about your needs, then, then that's very close to being an infant, a spiritual infant. But if, as we mature, we're to begin to look out and see other things and begin to pray for other things. Mm -hmm. And so as we have a broader vision, or in other words, we take on a perspective, God's perspective, how God sees things, and we begin to pray for those things, then we're, that shows that we have moved from being a spiritual infant to being spiritual, a spiritually mature adult. Okay, so we need to move in that direction from being a spiritual infant to become a spiritually mature adult. Okay, so mm -hmm. it, we can assess that by looking at our prayers. What are our prayers focusing on? If they're only focusing on meeting our needs, that's very much like a spiritual infant. But as we grow, we begin to see other things. We begin to see what God what, wants to do. Yeah, what God sees. A and then we want the resources to fulfill purpose and destiny. And we want our inheritance. See, back here as a spiritual infant, we're only concerned about getting our needs met. When we move further over here to become like a spiritual spiritually mature adult, we begin to see what God wants us to do. We're seeing what he's doing. We do what he, what we see him do. And we know we, that gives us a big vision and a big goal. And we're going to have to have big resources and an inheritance to fulfill that. So, amen, amen. so we're moving from just focusing on prayer. So what are your prayers? look what do your prayers look like and are they only about meeting your needs and the needs of your children and the needs of your spouse or is that what you're focusing on are you looking at your city or mm. are you looking at your workplace yeah are you praying about your workplace not not just about your salary uh but but about the, the sales of your uh organization or, or, or the effectiveness of your organization or, or whatever it is. How big is your vision? Uh, and uh, it, when you hear what God is calling you to do, it's going to be a vision bigger than you can fulfill mm -hmm. by, by yourself. yourself. I mean. In that case, you'll need God's resources you'll need to be able to see your inheritance. Uh, now, your inheritance Hallelujah. is a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. Now, getting our needs met and having uh, money in the bank and having food on our table and the, those things we can see. We can see those are physical things and natural things. But when we're talking about an inheritance, we're talking about an eternal thing. And we're talking about the resources of, of heaven. heaven. We're Woo! looking at things that are unseen. Uh, uh, but remember, Ephi let's go back to Ephesians 1 16. The eyes of our heart. 118. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance Woo! in the saints? Woo, glory. Now, Hallelujah. Okay, so it takes your Lord, let us see. 
takes your spiritual eyes to see your inheritance. It takes you your spiritual eyes, which are the eyes of your heart, becoming enlightened by the Spirit of God so you can see what your inheritance is. See, God has put you on this earth to do something magnificent. Yes. More than you can do by yourself. And it's going to take resources to do what God has called you to do. And you'll only see those when you learn how to see with your spiritual eyes, the eyes of your heart, and be able to see your inheritance. Then you'll know that when you've been called to do great and mighty things, you'll have a spiritual inheritance to fulfill that. Glory to God. You know, and what, what all of you that that come here to this meeting on a on a regular basis and you're faithful to come to hear the word of God, then what you're doing is saying, Lord, I receive my inheritance. I receive what you have for me to do. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't care whether you listen to this uh zoom meeting or not and and i know that that those that come and are faithful to come uh to hear the word of god that that god has mighty things for you to do and just like brother fred said there's potential in every single one of us to be a kingdom leader hallelujah and to share what the lord is doing you know, we share it with our family. We share it with our friends. We share it with with strangers. Uh, you know, this is this is what the Lord uh, wants us to do. Okay, so I'm going to highlight what I've talked about. And just bring it down to a nutshell. And God is looking for those people who will see the unseen. Mm, that's good, Fred. His leaders see what He is doing before others see it now the way we are to operate so that we can see what he is doing we have to develop our spiritual sight mm -hmm. and i've given you several scriptures that show that we're supposed to be looking at what is not seen rather than what is seen for the things that are not seen are eternal but the things that we see are temporary and that means they're going to change mm. and they're going to pass away. Amen. Okay. And then I've given you two things to think about to assess your readiness to be one of God's kingdom leaders. And the one is first is, are you encountering God? It's going to take encountering God over and over again to be changed from glory to glory. The second thing to check your readiness is what is the focus of your prayers? Are they only about meeting your needs or do you have a broader vision? You begin to see as God sees and see what yeah, you yeah. are called to mm -hmm. do and realize you have to have your inheritance, a spiritual inheritance to fulfill the purpose and destiny that you're on this earth for. So that's the nutshell of the message. And I want to thank you for being here. And I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Right. Thank you, Lord. Well, I think that God is moving all of us upward. He is moving us to higher ground so that we think about things that are higher than we are, uh, that we're not focused about things here on this earth, but that we're focused on what is God doing? Well, I want to see what he's doing. I want to speak like him and move like him. And I want to be uh, in the image of Jesus Christ. And when you get to that point where your focus is on eternal things, then you're maturing. You're being changed from glory to glory. And so this message tonight, I know it's touched our hearts. And that we we want to to be eternal beings uh, and seeking uh, the kingdom of God first and His righteousness and all of these things will be added unto us. And so, and I want to know 
my inheritance. I want to know uh, about those heavenly resources. And, you know, when I saw into heaven, when we went to North Carolina to Moravian Falls, an and, and it was an ancient portal, and upon Prayer Mountain, and when I saw in, into heaven, and I saw the beauty uh, that was there, the big, huge stones, they were, they were huge uh, sapphires and rubies and emeralds and diamonds that were just laying on the ground. And it was just, it was just absolutely a beautiful, beautiful place. You know, I thought to myself, you know, these are, these are incredible. Uh, my inheritance is incredible. And, and so is yours. And um, I know that we went to London. Uh, we've been to London several times, but um, we went to London and we went through uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, the jewels tower, tower 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 of london yeah the tower of london where the royal jewels are kept and we started going through there with a tour and i began to to cry and i and i cried the whole way through the tower of london and it, what what it was was just was realizing that if something so beautiful a crown with all these jewels in it, or a necklace with all these jewels in it, if it could be here on this earth, what must it be in, in the heavenly realm? And so I pray over you tonight that you will desire to see the things that God, that God sees and that you will participate with him and that you will desire of uh, your inheritance so that you can do mighty things for the Lord. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, I'd go to this country or that country if I had them, if I had the money, if I had the resources, I would do this or I would do that. I would go out on the streets and feed the poor. You know, this is this is something that we start and we walk by faith and not by sight. And the way this ministry started, we started despise not small beginnings and if you really have a desire in your heart to to feed the poor then get you some hot dogs put them in a bag put some chips with it and go out and 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 give people something to eat you know that's all it takes it takes that desire in your heart to be more than who you are and i i pray over you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, let them see what you're doing. Let them have a desire, Lord, to be more than they are. Let them desire to mature in Jesus' name. Let them desire the things uh, of the Spirit, Lord, more than the things of the world. Lord, I pray over them right now that their prayers will be focused on what you're seeing and what you're doing and what you tell them to pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you bring us out of ourselves, that you bring us out of the natural things, out of the routine things of everyday life. Lord, that you, you touch our hearts and you bring us into that heavenly realm, Lord, so that we can be leaders in your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. the name of Jesus, Amen. the name of Jesus. Some of you 